dude, it's twenty eight dollars a pound. Like, <laughs> there's yeah. no money to be. And then you get it. Money. Then you go, you go pick it up, and you, you know, you don't know until you cut into it. So we look at it, we're like, oh, it looks pretty good. And then you put it up, you know, take, you know, we were buying hundred pound tunas, throwing up on the thing, and then sometimes you cut into them, you're like, oh my god, this is, you know, everyone's stoked for you know doing the happy dance. Sometimes you open one up, you're like, oh man, this one sucks. Like we're, yeah, we can't even, you know, plenty of times. Okay, so What's that? tuna. Can you slice it open? Oh, <laughs> go, go ahead, Colin. Yeah, go ahead. There's, Colin, Colin will take this one. Tuna is probably one of the most parasitic fishes that we deal with by and by. There's several different types of parasites that affect the tunas, but the sachi parasite is probably the number one. And once the fish is caught and goes into rigor mortis, inside the sachi parasite, it's like a, almost like a big white ball that exists inside the flesh. When the fish goes into rigor mortis, this ball pops and it looks like it had been burned with like literally like acid. It's like this gooey abscess that's been inside the fish now. You want to make sure you cut that out and do not serve it to people. I can't imagine how many parasites people probably eat from tuna on a daily basis. It's inconceivable. Not to mention segueing into like the conversation of like industrialized pokey. You know, your pokey bowls that are like $12.95, $15. This is kind of like the version of like fish hot dog in a weird way. These giant tunas are broken down. Yeah. They're, they're put into macerated blenders. It's repressed into like a chicken McNugget paste. And then it's repackaged and frozen. So like you're literally, it's like the equivalent of a chicken McNugget or a hot dog put back in the fish. The economics of pokey don't work at all. So it's really weird. Fresh tuna, $27 a pound right now, market price. Your tuna pokey, which is almost about quarter to half a pound of fish, is a frozen pressed product pressed with carbon monoxide and died. So you're eating chemicals, you're eating carbon monoxide poisoning, but for $15, you can have that with rice and two sides. Forget it. Like tuna is crazy, crazy. So like Cody's saying, we would buy tuna and we might have like a 30% loss with a tuna, cutting it open and going, dude, look at all these sachi parasites. The water was warm, this was a sick fish. It's almost like a, a thing of numbers. You know, you take 10 fish, and three or four of those fish will be sachi ridden. They'll have parasites in them. There's also yeah. tuna worms. I mean, like our XGM, uh, I would love to grow some out because the guy's like, look, look at this. And I'd be pulling out like a tuna worm and be like, but this, I mean, that's the thing. Tuna is so popular, people don't understand or know this. And it's really interesting to understand the history of why we eat tuna now. It has a lot to do with World War II and post-World War II Japan. We had all these American servicemen stationed in Japan post-World War II, and they were starting to eat the normal foods of Japan like sushi, but they didn't really care for the really fishy fishes and stuff like that. So an enterprising Japanese guy was like, well, you know, tuna tastes like a, a raw steak kind of, and it does have this like really rare steak kind of flavoring to it. And I, you know, they started serving it more and more to American servicemen, and that's where it kind of became in fashion. And now, obviously, seen tuna is like the premier fish of all fish. If you look at, you know, menus pre World War II for Japan, this tuna wasn't as important as it is today. Now it's the number one fish, I mean, around the world. Bluefin tuna of certain sizes go for millions of dollars. It's high fatty, it's just delicately beautiful, but it's got some issues. And it's really expensive. They're literally pulling out dinosaurs for the world's consumption. And tuna's on every menu around the world. You're not dealing with small fishes that are easier to raise or easier to produce. And that's probably closer to the future. What Cody and I are trying to embrace is like, let's deal with striped bass. Let's deal with compaches. Let's go with smaller fish. They're easier to raise. They're easier to handle. It's less to ship. I mean, shipping a 250 pound tuna, it takes a lot of effort. You have to have forklifts and it's crazy process. And not only getting those things on the table and breaking them down, it's intense. 